All right, it is time to talk about that. Uh, I think it's the elephant in the room, is it not? The, uh, the world of social media. You guys uh, all comfortable with social media, everybody? Yeah, I'm not either. I remember when I started uh, my, my career in 97 in Detroit, uh, I fought my radio station to not have a cell phone. I didn't, I didn't want to have anybody get in contact with me when I was done working because at that time, you know, as a, as a 22-year-old broadcaster, you're working seven days a week. And uh, granted, you're talking about sports. There's nothing I can sit up here and moan and groan about. Uh, but I just didn't want, you know, the cell phone, was, I wasn't ready for it. Well, uh, pretty soon after, uh, I was told I had to have one. And, uh, and now, not only do I have a cell phone that X is a computer that can basically channel people from all over the place, I have to know how to work it. I have to know how to, you know, find out what the latest and greatest is because one day it's Twitter, the next day it's Meerkat. Uh, I don't know how Giselle does it, but she's going to teach us hopefully in the next uh, 20 minutes, half hour, about how we can all do it to, to help better our careers. Because in the end, uh, I, I have convinced myself that I need to figure it out. Uh, it seems like it is a, a key to victory. In, in a lot of different realms and a lot of different businesses, uh, not just with media, like people like me, but certainly with you guys running your businesses and trying to get people to come and, uh, and patronize them. Uh, so Giselle Aguiar is the founder of AZ Social Media Wiz. It's a social media inbound and content marketing strategy and training uh, is, is what she focuses in. And she helps business owners learn how to leverage the power of social media uh, in marketing and generating leads, establishing yourselves as experts in the fields, which will help increase your brand awareness and traffic to your websites or to your businesses. Giselle's an adjunct f uh, faculty member at Phoenix College as well, and she's worked in internet marketing since 1995. Now let's just think about what we were using the internet for 20 years ago. Uh, and she's kind of seen the whole thing ramp up. So now she's focused on social media and she is the official social media newsletter and blog manager for Greater Phoenix Score. So when you're seeing score in your social media streams, Giselle Aguiar is responsible. Let's bring her up to the stage. Thank you so much, and thank you, SCORE. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, I've been working with the SCORE for, uh, oh gosh, over three years now, and it's been an excellent experience, and I've had them also as mentors, helping me get my business started. And I'm so glad that we're doing baseball because that's about the only sport that I actually am into. I uh, grew up in New York, so I am a Mets fan. I lived for 15 years, hey Mets, yeah, in New York. Okay, I lived for 15 years in Miami, Florida Marlins. Nobody from Florida? Yay, all right. I moved here to Arizona because there were just too many hurricanes in Florida, so I decided to find a place where there are no more hurricanes. So now I'm a D-backs fan. Yay, D-backs. I love that picture. That's a, great, that's a great shot. But one of the things you have to understand um, in anything that you do, whether it be uh, a sports, um, you have to have a game plan. Even if you're a solopreneur, any solopreneurs out there like me, the chief cook, bottle washer, they put, they put me as CEO, and I'm like, I, I guess I'm CEO. Um, uh, yeah, I do everything. I do accounting, hesitantly, but I do accounting. <laughs> I do sales, I do marketing, I clean the house, I do everything. So, um, but some of you may work with a team. It could be one more, one other person, that's a team, a team of two. Or you can have 50 people. Okay, now if you're a solopreneur, your game plan is kind of like your to-do list. It's, it's uh, if you're going on a road trip, you have to have a plan of where you're going to go. If you have to stay over, you have to stay over somewhere. You, know, you have to know where you're going to stop, where you're going to get gas, and so forth. For somebody with, you know, more than one person working with you, you need to have a, a, a game plan. You, both, you all have to be playing in the same ballpark. It's like it's okay if, if half the deep backs are playing here in Chase Field and the other half are playing over in San Diego. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not going to work. Okay, and when and when you think about it, before the game, they have to know who they're playing against. So you have to know your competition. So they're prepared for you know who's who's pitching, the the batting lineup. So they know who's going to be who's going to be batting and how they're going to play in the field. 
And then, of course, you got the, the, you know, the coaches that are doing all the signs and all this kind of stuff. So the coaching is ongoing because the game is constantly changing. And that's how internet marketing is right now. But if you don't have a plan, it's not going to work. You have to think like the searcher. You have to put yourself in their shoes. How are they going to find you? More than likely, they're going to go to Google, and they're going to Google you. They're going to Google what you do or what you have to offer, whatever they need, when they want it, and when they need it. They're going to Google it. Google has 93% of all global searches. Okay, sorry, Microsoft. I know you're in the room, but... <laughs> So how are they going to find you? So what they have is your, the, the first thing is your website. And your website is way more than just your brochure online. It's a living, breathing entity that is constantly working for you. It's up 24-7. It's there when you're on vacation, when you're relaxing on the weekend. It's there working for you. And it also has to capture the leads. I'll talk about that in a second. Then you have your content, which is your blog or video or photography. Your blog is written content. Google is looking for fresh, relevant content written for the human reader. All that is is a blog, writing about what you know. Video is very hot right now. Not everybody can do video, so you do blogs. And then there's social media. And you have to understand there's two words in that. There's a social and there's a media. You can automate a lot of the media, but you have to be social. Otherwise, it doesn't work. But when you think about it, this is a way to build relationships with your potential customers. It's something that before, back in 1995, when the internet was first starting, that, that wasn't around. It didn't happen. So, so now, in the whole history of the internet, you can take control of your marketing. You can learn how to do this. It's not that difficult. This is not rocket science. Okay? It is actually very logical, and it all works. Walt Disney, in 1953, he said, you have to go where the people are. Back then, he was talking about what? Television. He was negotiating with ABC to start the wonderful world of Disney. And now Disney owns ABC. <laughs> but he was trying to convince his brother, who did not want to do this, that television was the next best thing. It's where the people are. Now, that's where the people are. They're on social media. These are the, the five major networks. I didn't put YouTube on there because YouTube is more of a media channel. For, for video, but it's like billions of hours of video are downloaded daily. One of the things since I've been teaching and, and you know, telling people about social media is that each of these networks, they, they're, they're different. They each have their own culture. I used to sell cars. That was my first job when I moved here. So I, it, it dawned on me, and I'm like, each network drives differently. So that's how I define the networks and help people understand Twitter. Twitter is the sports car. It's fast, it's newsy, it's life in 140 characters or less. News no longer breaks, it tweets. If you want to know what's going on right now, you go to Twitter. LinkedIn, the luxury sedan. Professional, classy, no fooling around. It's for business. It's more business to business than business to consumer. In fact, I'm doing a LinkedIn class for SCORE on uh, April 15th. <coughs> Whoops, went too fast. Ah, Pinterest is the minivan. 80% women, half of them have kids. You want to reach soccer moms? You have to be on Pinterest. It's more business to consumer. Went too far. There we go. Pinterest, the minivan. Oh, this is sensitive. Okay. YouTube is the convertible. People who drive convertibles, and guess what I drive, a convertible. Um, they want to be noticed. You go to YouTube to get exposure. Google Plus, it's the pickup truck. Down to business. It's connected to the Google search engine. Google actually rewards you for being active on Google Plus. 
the more active you are on Google+, Plus, if, it, if you have 100 active followers that are, are engaging, so you're, tweet, you're, you're sharing their stuff, you're liking their stuff, you're, you're commenting on their stuff, and back and forth. They will, Google rewards you with up to 14 spaces in the search engine results page. That's huge. That can, that, can, that can mean from being on page three to being on page one. And everything that you post publicly on Google Plus gets indexed in the search engine right away. Then you've got Facebook. Facebook is the crossover. It's more B2C than B2B. It's about 60% of business to consumer, 40% um, business to business. So usually when you look at LinkedIn, it's more business to business, but you also have to consider that the people who are on LinkedIn, they're also consumers. And that's, not a, that's a really nice uh, demographic on LinkedIn also. But it's a different demographic on Pinterest. It's a younger demographic. So you have to learn all this, all this stuff and each one is, each one is different. And before you start all this, you have to know yourself. What's your mission? Why are you doing what you're doing? What are your goals and objectives? What's your brand? What's your niche? You have to have a niche. If you're, not, if you're too broad, it's not going to work. You have to have a niche. What makes you different, unique? What do you have to offer that the other guy doesn't have to offer? And you have to know your competition. Just like the baseball team has to know who they're up against. So what's your competition doing? How many followers do they have on Twitter? How often are they blogging? What are they doing? That's just as important. And your goals have to be smart. Specific, measurable, achievable, Relevant and time-bound. Otherwise, you're not going to know when you've reached them. Now, an example of a SMART goal is to reach 100 Twitter followers in 30 days. Now, yes, that's doable. I can show you how to do that. Now, reaching 1,000 Twitter followers in 30 days, then that's a little bit too ambitious. Okay, if you're a celebrity, maybe a sports star, maybe... Okay, but if you're starting from scratch, 100 is a good number to, to reach. So at the end of 30 days, if you haven't reached your 100 followers, you have to say, well, what didn't I do? Or what was I doing wrong? And if you did reach your 100 followers, you say, hey, it, it worked. This works. Okay. Then you have to know your target market. And here's where a lot of people drop the ball. You have to define your target market's persona. Any realtors in the room? Okay, I worked with a realtor in Avondale. I asked her, who's your target market? She says, well, anybody who wants to buy or sell a house. And I'm like, eh, that's a little too broad. Can we narrow it down a little bit? Hispanics. And that's still a little too broad. I narrowed it down a little bit. So she thought a minute and she said, hmm, young Hispanic professionals with families who want to move to, to, the, West, to the West Valley. Now we've got somebody to work with, okay? You talk to a 35-year-old different than you talk to a 55-year-old. You talk to a professional different than you talk to a blue-collar worker. So you have to keep that in mind before you start doing anything. Then you have to do your research. Where are they hanging out online? Did you know that Pinterest is so hot right now that that's where, the peop that's where people go to plan stuff like crazy? So you have, to, you have to consider that. And then your target market, what are their interests, likes, what are their pain points? How is your business, your product or service, how are you going to alleviate those pain points? And you again, you have to think like your target market. And you have to do this research. You have to get to know your target market because otherwise you can't think like them if you don't know who they are. And if you're too broad, that you, you lose total control on that. You can't do that. So first you start with your strategic plan. So the strategies and your, your plan are how, do you, how are you going to accomplish your goals and objectives? You're going to need specific strategies for blogging and content marketing. 
Now, blogging and, and videos will fall in there too. Uh, so what kind of content are you going to put out and create? Content marketing also includes other people's content that you can share that would be of interest to your target market. They could be industry leaders, thought leaders in your field, or side businesses that are related. And then you have to have a specific strategy for each of the networks. Like they drive differently. You don't drive a sports car like you drive a pickup truck. There's things that work on Twitter that don't work on LinkedIn, that you just don't do that. Okay, then you need the tactical plan. So the tactical plan is how you're going to implement your strategic plan. So you have to start with blogging, and you need to blog at least once a week. If you're starting out and you need to be known as a, uh, an expert in your field, you, optimally you should be blogging two to three times a week. And the blogs don't have to be long, it's about 300 words. And you can use videos, videos can be part of this too. Building your following, if you're starting from scratch, it takes 90 minutes a day for 30 days. Okay, now it doesn't have to be a block of 90 minutes. It could be 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, whatever fits into your schedule. You have to carve, the, carve out the time to do this. If you don't take the time in the beginning to build your following, it's going to take you longer to do that, and then it's going to take you longer to start seeing results. Once you've got your following built, then with the free tools that are out there, like Hootsuite and TweetDeck, you can learn how to manage it in 30 minutes a day. Yes, it's doable. And in the beginning, it may seem overwhelming because you're learning about, um, let's see, six to seven software programs at the same time. Now, about this time, you're probably saying, oh my god, there is absolutely no way I can put this into my day. I already work 15 hours a day. When am I going to do this? There's not enough time in the day. I've got the answer to that. <laughs> we have a productivity boot camp that we're offering. I work with a productivity coach. And she can help you find the time and be more productive. You can stop by my table later. We have that information. Now, the 10 for one rule kind of is a guide that um, the folks at HubSpot put together. HubSpot um, was, uh, they, they actually coined the phrase inbound marketing a few years ago. For every 15 posts, and that could be at any given network, 10 are other people's posts shared with your uh, uh, followers. Four are your original content or tips, and those are your blog posts or your videos, or tip of the day, tip of the week. One out of 15 is a direct sales pitch. So those of you who are just posting, um, we're fantastic, we're great, buy this, buy now, do this, do this now, all the time, okay, you're, you're spamming, you're too much. It's not about you. It's about what is of interest to your target market. It's about giving them information, giving them advice. Okay, then, you gotta take into consideration how are you gonna capture the leads? So your social media and your blog are drawing traffic to your website. How are you going to capture the leads? So you have to start with sign up for our newsletter. And later on, Lynn will be talking about using email marketing. And that's another factor that works in conjunction with social media. You have to have some sort of call to action. What do you want me to do when I land on your website? Don't make me think. Don't make me work. Okay? Don't make me hunt for the social media buttons that are all the way down on the footer of your page. I know you I know you're 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 guilty. You're guilty, okay? You don't even have social media buttons. Well, you gotta make it easy for people to do stuff, otherwise they're just not gonna do it. It's I mean it's that simple. You wanna get followers, you have to tell them, follow us on social networks. Let's connect. Make it easy. And these buttons need to be up on the top somewhere. Make it easy for people to share your content with their friends. That's what this is about. It's about sharing. You want that, what's called social amplification. Then you have to analyze. Oh my, analytics, oh my God. Well, analytics is just measuring. It's doing your financial report at the end of the month. 
Well, this is doing your marketing report at the end of the month. Which of your efforts are driving people to your website? Now, if you have a WordPress site, there's a free plugin called Jetpack. In fact, this is a sample of it. And it tells you where the people came from. And this is extremely valuable information. Because you see, in this particular case, above the, right under the search engines is Twitter. So that means every, th every time I'm posting to Twitter, it's driving people to my website. Conversion rates. I have 100 people visit my site. I sold 10 pieces of the 10 books or whatever I'm selling. What will happen to the 90, uh, the, uh, the 90 people? That, where did they go? So that's something you need to think about. Where did they get lost? Where did I lose them? And then which are your most popular blog posts? That's what people like. So you have to keep feeding them. In fact, in the SCORE blog, the most popular blog post is one that I wrote a couple of years ago, 11 LinkedIn Reputation Killers. It's had over 1,600 views. So I have to keep, I have to keep writing about that. Each social network has its own analytics or insights, depending on which one, if they're called different things. So on Twitter, in fact, this is a client of mine, Scuba Professionals of Arizona. Yes, it's a scuba dive shop in the desert, which that's one of their challenges. But they have 1,000 Twitter followers, only 10% are, are here in Phoenix. So that's a problem. So you have to say, do the demographics represent your target market? Which post got the most engagement? What's your reach? What's your social amplification? Did you meet your goals? What worked? What didn't work? What did you learn about your target market? What's the best time to post in tweets? Analytics and insights give you all this information, and it's free to get these. And then each month you have to adjust accordingly. So for, you plan for the next month based on your analytics. So you say, well, oh wow, I'm getting more traffic from Twitter than I am from Facebook, so I'm gonna spend more time on Twitter. That doesn't mean you're gonna ignore Facebook, but you, 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 you focus your time on, the, on what's bringing the business to you and what's helping you build relationships. And, if you fail to plan, plan to fail. That's it exactly. And believe me, it is very, 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 very true. So I got a couple of minutes to take a few questions. Uh huh. Online, yes, it's twenty-five dollars, and you can sign up online. Yes, at the score, um, the score website. April fifteenth. Yes. Good morning, I'm Denise Poulin-Wells, and you were speaking about maintaining your following 30 minutes a day, and you mentioned a couple software programs. What are they? Thank you. Um, TweetDeck and HootSuite. TweetDeck is, is to manage Twitter, and HootSuite, for free, you can manage up to three accounts. So I usually recommend um, LinkedIn, Google+, and your Facebook business page. And it allows you to uh, post stuff to all three of them at the same time, to schedule stuff out. And that is, and that's, and to, to use, for Google+, Hootsuite is the only tool that you can do that with. Hi, Giselle. It's been a long time since I've seen you. I'm up at the top. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Uh, <gasps> Pat Feldhaber with Uniquely You Jewelry. I noticed you didn't mention Instagram. Uh, you've mentioned the other ones, but you didn't mention Instagram. Yes. And for the demographics of each market, it makes a difference if you use that. Right. But I, um, Instagram is uh, slightly different because it is mobile only. And, it, you, and it's great for exposure, you know, like here in the event, taking pictures and hashtagging and, and putting it up. That's fantastic. But Pinterest is way more powerful because when you pin something from somebody's website, it takes the link along with it. So it helps with search engine optimization. And you have space to put 
descriptions and keywords in there. And Pinterest is way more powerful than Instagram. Instagram works, yes, for, for certain types of companies, but not for everybody. So that's part of the strategic thing. And yeah, there's Foursquare also for, for, um, for local businesses. Uh, you know, so there's different, there's other networks out there. So that's where the, you know, the, the planning and research comes in. Hi, um, Jessica with La Belle Salon. I had a question. What if you don't have WordPress? How do you get that traffic report? Um, Google Analytics. Okay. Google Analytics. Thank yes. You. Google Analytics. In fact, you can if you talk to the GoDaddy people that they're here, they're, they can um, help you if your site is associated with GoDaddy, um, how to put Google Analytics in there. One minute. Okay, you can also ask questions up later at, at the round table too. I'll be happy to answer questions Hi. here. I'm Malin, and um, I want to know: Should a business have all social media covered, or should they just have the three that they know the target market is at? I I usually tell people to have a presence in all of them. Consider them free billboards and extra links to your site. Okay, each of them has their own internal search engines. So you're going to get found, but you're going to focus on where your target market is and where you're, what's bringing you results to your site and what's, uh, what's helping, uh, helping, you know, drive traffic and, and get your business. That's where the analytics come in. But it, and so, you know, if you realize you're more business to business, you're going to be focusing more on LinkedIn and Twitter and Google Plus for exposure, but you're not going to forget Facebook. You're going to post there maybe not as often as you would do on LinkedIn, but you're not going to ignore it either. Yep. Okay, am I, is that it? I just had one really quick question. I'm down yes. here. I don't oh. know if you can see. <laughs> um, I know that Pinterest, um, at least when I hear my other fellow moms talking about it, Pinterest gets credited with all the ideas that are on Pinterest. So what do you recommend for making your content stand out so that people recognize that it's coming from your site rather than just Pinterest? Well, you have to have pinnable content on your website. So the graphics have to be large enough. Usually vertical pictures work better. Pinterest, you can pin pictures and video. So good visual pictures get pinned there. But the idea is that you, you have to um, pin them from your site. So if people click twice on a pin, it goes to your website. And that's, that's what makes Pinterest so, much pow so powerful because it also helps with search engine optimization. Um, yeah, but you have to put, you, you, I mean, it, when, you're, when you're pinning something from your site, you have to put the descriptions of, of, you know, what it is that you're pinning and how it relates to your site. And you have 500 characters when you're pinning, so you, you can have your description in there, and that's, that's what helps. That's part of the strategy for Pinterest. And I think that's it. Again, uh, we have the roundtable discussion up in the back there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Giselle.